Many people know Rocket League can get incredibly mechanical at the high ranks, but with what happened this past weekend at RLCS Worlds, I think it's safe to say the mechanical ceiling has absolutely exploded. Compared to just two or three seasons ago, pros are now pulling off insane mechanics with a level of consistency that we've never seen before. So today, I'm taking inspiration from one of my buddy Waitin' Pilkin's videos that I saw a little while back, but with a little twist. Today, I'll be covering seven pro mechanics that you mainly just see at the super high ranks right now that I think are gonna trickle down and become meta at the lower and lower ranks. Now, of course, this is just all my opinion from watching, but I think especially if you're pushing into the intermediate or more advanced ranks, these are going to be the mechanics you might want to start thinking about and that you probably don't know yet. Without any further ado, this is seven pro mechanics that will become meta at your rank. Also, my team and I are giving away free coaching calls. So if you didn't know, I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program, where we specialize in taking plat through champ ranked players up to GC or even SSL in just six weeks or less. At the time I'm recording this, we have just 21 days left of enrollment. So if you want to join the now over 1300 players that have used this program to rank up and you want to get in before we sell out and go on pause for the next few months, DM me on Discord with the keyword meta and we can get a free intro call set up between you and somebody who's already ran the program links down below otherwise enjoy the video okay number one the first mechanic that's going to become meta at the lower ranks is neutral jumps now, for those of you who don't know, a neutral jump or empty jump is basically just when you use that second jump, like you would on, say, a fast aerial, to sort of propel your car up without flipping. Now, the reason I want to highlight neutral jumps is especially as I've ranked up and as I've watched more and more high-level gameplay, the most common use case I've been seeing for this is when a pro, like, jumps off the wall and then flips their car over to sort of neutral jump and propel themselves downwards for recoveries. But some pros are even using this to recover off the ceilings faster or just to get to the ball quicker off the wall. It's almost like pros are starting to fast aerial off the walls and off the ceilings to get from point A to point B that much faster. Now, at the lower ranks, when the pace of play is slower, doing this isn't game changing, but as you get higher and higher ranked, even just the few odd seconds that using these neutral jumps saves can be the difference between getting scored on or scoring yourself. Number two, musty flicks. I know, I know, this might sound crazy, but I genuinely think musty flicks will become meta and you probably already have started to see them become meta at the lower and lower ranks. Just like a while ago, many people thought flip resets were just a flashy mechanic and didn't really have much use. You're now seeing musty flicks be used in tons of situations all across the field. Specifically at RLCS, I saw a ton of pros using musty flicks on low boost, or even no boost off of the walls or in the air to get a level of power that you just can't get with other mechanics. Now, the lower ranks, people going for musty flicks are usually just messing them up and flopping. But when you can get consistent, there's really no other way to get a mid-air flick as consistently and as powerfully as with a musty. I think these are going to take much longer than, say, neutral jumps to trickle down, and the use case is much more rare. But if you're on low boost and you need to clear the ball off the wall, musty flicks can genuinely be a viable option if you get them down consistently. Number three, squishy saves. I don't know if you can technically call squishy saves a mechanics, but... For the purpose of this one, we're just, we're just going to roll with it because I think squishy saves are genuinely an extremely useful mechanic. Specifically at RLCS, when teams were on their last leg or making a last ditch effort to try to defend, squishy saves were actually used to bail some teams out of getting scored on entirely. Now, I don't think squishy saves are the ideal way to defend. Let me make that clear. But just like with musty flicks, there are certain extreme cases where they do become useful. I'm thinking primarily when a team's been broken down on defense for a long time or are running low on boost, squishy saves can sometimes be the last resort for a defender to stay alive. 
I wouldn't recommend that you start going for squishy saves all the time in your games, but there's a reason that pros actually use them and they're not just to show off. The amount of speed and recovery potential good squishy save creates is what I think earns this mechanic a spot on the list and might be something worth considering just to practice a bit. Number four, ceiling challenges. Just like squishy saves, I don't know if ceiling challenges are necessarily a mechanic. They're sort of more like a strategy, I guess. But even more so than maybe squishy saves, I think ceiling challenges should be something you start to learn at even the grand champ ranks. Especially in 3v3, at the high ranks, we are starting to see ceiling challenges become one of the best ways to defend. Not only do ceiling challenges give the defender the ability to save their flip and use it to block an attack whenever they want, but the ceiling challenges are also one of the most boost efficient ways to stop a high level area attack. How relevant a ceiling challenge might be is really just dependent on how good the attackers are in your lobbies. The higher and higher rank you get and the more mechanically skilled your opponents get in the air, the more you're probably going to want to learn how to ceiling challenge. Number five, and this one might be a little controversial, but I think it should count, and it's mid-air speed flips. Now, what do I mean by a mid-air speed flip? Basically, a mid-air speed flip is just any sort of pre-flip to chase down a ball that's like a little bit further away than you could reach just flying at it and boosting. Specifically, when the pace of play gets super, super high in your lobbies, and it's just a foot race to see who can get to a jump ball first, let's say, pros are using mid-air speed flips, so literally speed flipping in midair to track balls down way quicker than you can do without. The reason I'm calling these midair speed flips are because pros are literally using the same flip that you would use on the ground to chase the ball down in the air. And the reason it works so well is because when you speed flip, your nose always stays facing forward. So as long as you have the level of precision to be able to kind of predict where your car's gonna end at the end of that flip animation, speed flips can be one of the fastest ways to track down a ball. Now, the big asterisk here is if you can control your car and if you can predict where it's going to land, because otherwise you just end up whiffing like me. <laughs> but if you can get good at these, I mean, we're seeing the pros start to use these pre-flips like they're just an extension of their normal kit. So mid-air speed flips, number five. Finally, onto the two bonus mechanics that I know get like memed on a lot, but I do think are worth mentioning. And that number six spot is air roll. I know what you're saying, Luke, of course everybody air rolls. At base level, yeah, I agree. Air roll is not like a super advanced mechanic. But when I say air roll, what I mean is directional air roll. Specifically, I think having both air roll left and air roll right, both key binded, is going to become meta at the super high ranks. Now, I think this one's going to take many years to catch on and is probably going to be the slowest developing of any trend but when i watch some of the really really high rank players these days i'm starting to see the ones that are on like just another level with their mechanics those are the people that you're starting to see use both directional air rolls so for the vast majority of players i still recommend just learn one and you're gonna get like 95 percent of the benefits but for the people at the very very high levels where every split second every moment of precision matters sometimes it can be slower to use only one directional air roll and it would be better if you had perfect control over both so my sixth mechanic for this video air roll i think it does deserve a spot finally the seventh pro mechanic that i think is going to become meta at your rank a lot of people are going to hate me in the comments for this one i know but it is flip resets over the past year to year and a half, my view on flip resets has completely changed. First, I was in the camp of they take so long to learn, they're not useful, they're not worth your time, etc, etc. And while I do think a lot of players overemphasize flip resets and overvalue them and how good they are, I think at the very, very high ranks, which is what we're talking about this video, flip resets are becoming an absolutely essential mechanic. The truth is defenders at the high, high ranks are so good that if you don't do something flashy, they can stop a basic, you know, air dribble, even if it is pretty well controlled. Flip resets, on the other hand, give you this ability to add like a last minute direction change that if you set up properly are virtually unstoppable from a defender's point of view. 
if you can get consistent with them, they've got to be one of the most unstoppable forms of attacking up there with like the air dribble bump. Okay, so to recap, neutral jumps, musty flicks, squishy saves, ceiling challenges, mid air speed flips, flip resets, and air roll. Those are the seven mechanics that on some level, I think are going to become more and more meta at the lower ranks. Of course, these are just my opinions. Hands up to everybody in the comment section. So I'd love to hear what you all have to say down below. Check out the suggested videos on my feed or my second IRL channel. Yes, I have a second IRL channel if you want to see more from me. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace, guys.